So it's a pretty soggy end of July, um, just after five o'clock in the morning. And we're supposed to be heading out to try and call some roebucks in the rut. But there hasn't been a lot of activity this last week or so, mainly because the weather's been quite cold and had a bit of a north wind again. So uh, it's a bit damp this morning, so I think we'll just have a look around from the truck, stay as dry as we can at the moment, and if we see any uh, row moving around, we can jump out and try and have a call on them. Or if it, the rain goes off later on today, then um, we can have a call this afternoon. Hopefully it will dry up and stuff will start moving around a bit. Munchuck buck. Still got his antlers in velvet, but they look almost fully grown now. Could be the only stupid deer out this morning in this weather. So the trouble this time of year is that we've got several fields now where the, the crops have been cut or harvested. So like this field on the left, it's obviously low cover. We can see the deer all the way across that field. Um, but the problem with that is they then just, when they're laying up they just move into the next bit of high cover which is these hedgerows still or as you can see on the left here this maze is now six foot tall so they'll just go and lay up in there obviously if we're calling something we'll hopefully try and get it out of the high cover A roebuck and a doe in the field rutting. Right, we've got a roebuck and a doe in the field out there, sort of wandering around a little bit. So we'll grab the stuff and head out there and have a closer look. Just close your doors quietly when you get out. Okay. Looks like we've got two bucks out there and a doe sat down in the stubble. Two bucks have moved into that lump of uh, spinny cover there on the right hand side of the field. I can't see the doe anymore that was sat down in the field but I think there was a third buck on the far hedgerow which I've just seen running off so whether that's pushed that doe off and chasing that around. We'll just go to the corner here and have a little call see if we can get any of those bucks out of the um, trees in front of us. an older one, but one of them's a younger one, and then there's two kids. You can see it on the edge of the maze there. Just come 
myself in the maze. Lovely. Out here, look, guys. See it? Just sat down in the field now, about 120 metres away. So just to recap what just happened, we came round this little clump to try and call the, the bucks that we'd seen from the truck and bumped a buck into next door's field, which was a bit annoying because it was one I wanted to take really. So maybe we'll come back this afternoon and see if we can get that one on our side of the boundary. Um, as we were calling that one, just to try and have a closer look at it, we've called a four point buck um, out of a clump of trees on our side, which came to about 120 meters and then just sat down. Um, and then a doe came out with another buck, which was probably one to take as well. But the doe came right up and uh, obviously smelt us and ran off. And the, um, the buck that was with that sort of saw her reaction and ran straight back to a little bit of cover. And then they ran off all together. So we'll just head down here a little bit and have a squeak from a different position, see if we can draw them back out again. If not, we'll come back this afternoon and see if we have any more luck. Just using a little bootalo call before. Gonna go onto one of these mouth calls now because you get a bit more volume on it. <coughs> Can see a roebuck in uh, the next field over and some standing cereal.
So now we've walked back a little bit towards the truck. Um, we've got a little roebuck just sat down in the cereal field. We couldn't see it before because its um, silhouette was against like the dark um, bit of hedge there. So we might just walk out across the field, just have a closer look at it. If we can get to the telegraph pole. It's about 100 metres from us to the buck. It's a, a young one, but it looks like a good cold buck to take. So we'll just try and get to that pole and then just get set up and see if it will stand up. Does everyone keep him behind here? Yeah. This course is going to run in now. <laughs> so there you go, we got out to the telegraph pole. It was sat about 100 metres away from us. Give it a couple of squeaks. Obviously got its interest and it stood up. But then once they start coming towards you, unless you want to get them really close for the fun of it um, you want to really just go quiet because otherwise if you keep squeaking they just keep coming straight towards you and all you get is a front on shot so obviously once he was coming towards us go a little bit quiet and then they'll start to wander around a little bit and you can get a, a good side on shot when they've turned a little and just gave it a little bark like a roebuck just to stop it where it was and then obviously took the shot so good result um, from a soggy old morning really isn't it everything's soaked but uh, we've got a result we'll go and have a look good shoulder shot a little four pointy six pointy buck nothing to write home about yeah so just a little four sort of small six pointery thing um it's not overly defined in terms of the points it's got and obviously we've seen quite a lot of um deer on this field this morning and we haven't shot anything here all season so it's just a good one to take out, just for numbers, really. Um, we've probably seen quite a lot on this field, even though it's been raining all morning because it was only just cut a few days ago. And all the other fields around us are still standing crops, so they're pretty wet. So I'd imagine that the deer would rather be stood out on here where at least um, they're not getting wet from 360 degrees um, like they would do if they were laid in a crop somewhere. Um, so we'll get this back to the larder. And then we'll head out this afternoon and see if we can call up some other ones in other areas just for the fun of it. So it hasn't been like usual rutting conditions 
the textbooks will say like you want it hot, humid, thundery to get them really rutting. But obviously this morning shows that if the rut's on and they feel in the mood for running about, they'll do it whatever the weather. So just try and dry some of this out, but obviously don't use uh, tissue on the actual scope glass. Use a proper cleaning cloth for that because it might scratch it with tissue, but we'll just try and dry these out as much as possible so the scope doesn't fog up. driving back across the estate to the larder and we've got a young roebuck and a doe a couple hundred metres out in that wheat crop. Obviously just stood there looking at us now. and a buck on the left. <coughs> right on the right here, CJ. You see it? Straight in front of us then. Just a young buck. Wind's not great again, it's coming from behind us. Not really interested that much. We'll just get through this hedge and go up towards them a bit.
You want that one on the right, Emily? Well, there we go. We came into the corner of the field there and saw this old buck and a doe uh, at the far side here. Managed to creep out of the truck um, and just give them a bit of a squeak to sort of hold their attention, really. Um, but the wind's coming from us to them again, which obviously wasn't great. We called up like a little roebuck, which came right through the hedge to us, about 10 metres away. Um, and then that went back through the hedge when it saw us and then ran right round in front of us. So we just crept up a bit closer because this buck's quite an old one and it's starting to go back. So it's a good one to take out and let the younger ones come through. So it's just run a little bit. So we'll just go forward and see what's happened. So we've had a good look round at the shot site and just in the immediate area where we thought the buck ran in, but there's no sign of it. Um, obviously you guys will see because you've seen the video, but maybe the shot's a little bit lower, a little bit forward. Um, I'm hoping it's just run through the hedge and then uh, gone into the standing crop the other side. So what we'll do is we'll go back home, get the dogs and uh, come back and have a look in 20 minutes or so. So what we'll do is we'll take we'll take the old Bavarian uh, first. Capra, come here. Um, you're a bit old and grumpy and miserable, aren't you now? And you don't like getting wet and you don't like going through stinging nettles. So we'll take him, see if he does a dot to dot. Um, and then if we don't have any luck, we'll maybe get the Labrador out and just cover a wider area with a very enthusiastic young dog that just likes to run around a lot. Um, we'll take the rifle loaded um, and the scope wound right down because obviously we have to assume when we're following a deer up that it might still be alive we need to take a quick second shot on it come on see if you're going to perform today come on in Good boy. Where is it then? Get in then. Get in then. Okay, guys, I've got it. You can come in. Good boy. Good boy. Hey, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Where's he then? Where's he then? Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, for real, guys. Good boy. Get this lead out of the way. Just watch out. There's a, a badger hole down here. 
Right, so there we go. It was going to happen eventually. Um, obviously, it wasn't a great shot from me in the first place. Um, so there was no sign of it really uh, being hit or any blood on the field. But the dog didn't want to get wet, which is why he wasn't too keen. Um, but he came in, obviously, where the deer ran into the hedgerow uh, and then turned along a track in the hedge here. Um, and just as we came over this little brow of the hill, looking down into this pit, I just see it laid down there so managed to get the gun up and um, shot it in the back of the head just behind the ear there um, which is the only bit of the body I could see really um, obviously once you've got a wounded animal you need to dispatch it as quick as possible so regardless of you know the head in terms of antlers and sticking it on your wall um, if that's the only shot I've got to take then that's what I'll take if I'd have got a shot on the body I probably would have taken it in the body um, somewhere oh, here you go my shot here, this is the exit side where it was stood, so looks like the shot's just come right in on the front of the chest, hit it on the front of the shoulder on the way out. Um, so it's not a, an obviously killing shot, but obviously in this hot weather it would have uh, got inflected and fly blown and, and died a, a week or so later. So yeah, good that we got it. You guys have seen me mess it up on camera, which, um, you know, unfortunately if you shoot enough, it's gonna happen. Um, seen the dog find it and hopefully it's given you a little bit of uh, knowledge to follow something up if something goes wrong with you guys at home back to the larder good boy come on in good dog probably worth saying that obviously I've got a fairly trained deer dog and another one coming along to replace him in the future but a lot of you guys at home you might not have a, a dog at all or a trained dog that you can use to follow up wounded deer but if you search online there's a couple of uh, tracking groups that will come out and find deer for you um, usually ask for like a, a small payment for fuel or something um, but I think it's deer tracking services and also UK uh, deer tracking and recovery so if you just Google those, um, if you get any problems, give them a ring. They're very discreet. Don't be embarrassed about it because obviously the welfare of, of finding a wounded deer is more important than our ego. So it's about three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, obviously the rain seems to have subsided. It's quite warm now. It's about 24 degrees, quite muggy. Um, so, so hopefully a bit better conditions for calling roebucks in the rut. Um, we've come to roughly the same area where we shot the, um, the first roebuck this morning. But the way the wind is, we're going to have to walk out behind us here, come around the sort of standing crop out to my left, and then come back into the field uh, where we shot the this little buck this morning and see if we can call up some of those other ones. So we'll get all the kit together and then uh, take a big loop round. So we've just come into this field, which obviously they've done a couple of passes of the combine yesterday, uh, but all that rain this morning, I very much doubt they're gonna be in here the rest of the day. Um, the wind's blowing from this direction, going that way. Um, so I think we'll just cut straight through the, the standing crop here, go up to a spinny up on the far hedgerow, um, and then have a call. And we, the way the wind is, we'll hopefully get, or well, might get something coming from the right side or the left side. Um, and then we'll head into the, the field further down there, which is where we shot that small one this morning. It's always worth, when you're going through these crops, when you get to the tram lines, just go over them slowly and look either side, because the deer use them as like little highways, and sometimes you'll get them laid up in the tram lines. So just check both sides before you go on to the next one. 
So we got a, a roe doe and a young buck just moving through this tall crop. I don't think that they know we're here, but the wind is going from us sort of roughly in their direction. We'll just get let them get a little bit further across and then we'll give them a little squeak, see if we can get them any closer. Going away now. They've just kept on going. Um, I think the doe heard the call, but she wasn't really interested. We'll just keep going up because the buck wasn't really anything that we need to shoot anyway. interested at all. It's the same two that we saw just a few minutes ago. Obviously when you've had a call it's just worth looking all the way around you just in case something sneaks up on you from behind. I usually carry like the bootelo or my binocular harness all the time just for stopping deer generally but when we're going out calling I'll have like two or three calls on me so I've got three calls two mouth ones and the bootelay and even though they don't react to one of them it's a bit like fishing it's sometimes worth trying the other ones because the different noises sometimes get the deer slightly more excited Got their attention a little bit more on this one. <coughs> Just chasing away again. So the doe's not interested at all. Because obviously like a lot of the times when you're calling you're imitating the sound of a kid and you're like trying to get the doe to come to you and the buck will come as well thinking that the doe might be there but she's not interested and although he keeps looking over this way he did make a little bit of a move towards us he obviously doesn't want to leave that doe and they've just gone chasing off away from us plus the wind is going straight from us towards them basically never mind nice to see something it was still early so We'll keep heading over. Got another doe in front of us. About 200 metres in front of us on the edge of the hedge. coming behind. It's a different buck and doe, but again we just got the wind going straight to them. Just know something's not quite right. 
but it just shows you how like even calling them can just hold them there even if they know we're here because they can smell us like the the call just makes them interested enough to keep them there Looks like that one's gone straight down. You can just see the sort of top half of its chest over the crop, so just aim to shoot straight over the top of the crop. It's about 120 metres, I reckon. I don't think it was the same two that we saw just out in the middle of the field here. I think it's a different two that have come out of the hedge. But again, that's a, the one we shot's a young buck. Good one to take by the looks of it. Go and have a closer look. Keep Britain tidy. So there we go, sort of uh, a bit like that one this morning really, sort of undefined four point buck. This is probably its second set of antlers so really wanted it to be a bit better quality than this by the age it is. Um, so shot through the shoulder, come out on the, the front of the shoulder on the other side. Uh, yeah, nice one to take. and. Um, We'll just drag it in the edge here and go and have a look down the corner here, see if there's any more knocking about. Um, the only thing that's worth mentioning, just in case you guys are worried that I'm just wanging shots away into the skyline, is obviously a lot of the times where the guys are filming behind me, they're at different angles. So um, Emily on camera too just wanted me to uh, let you know that, that it's quite a low angle she was filming at. So there was plenty of backstop from where I was actually shooting. So. Right, get this over to the hedge. So we're just uh, taking some pictures of the deer and uh, talking about it. And uh, one of the camera guys asked what this um, dark mark was on the back of its leg. And for those that don't know, it's a scent gland. So most of the deer species have that. Um, and obviously during the rut, when everything's a bit more heightened and sensitive, um, you know, these will get a bit bigger, everything becomes a bit more pronounced. Um, some of the deer have other glands in other places, like Munjack have them on their heads, on their faces, um, and they all have like a, a scent gland between the, the cleaves of their feet as well. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. If you ever see it, that's completely normal. We'll just tuck in this hedge a little bit and just have a call for a few minutes, see if we've got anything in this um, bottom ditch line that might come out to us. Roebuck and a jet plane. We've got a roebuck come out of the far top hedge. 
Just get down the hedge a little bit. Hit the deck. Just came flying in that last like 300 meters. And we just got a bit stuck in the middle of nowhere. There was too much grass to take a shot in front of me. The trouble is, he'll go round on the wind now to try and work out what we are. They'll just wind us and run out the back. We'll just very quickly go down through here. See if we can get enough distance, maybe pull him through the hedge. Oh, here he is. Sorry, come back because he kind of knows what we are, but we'll give it a few minutes just in case. Uh, I think we've uh, pushed our luck a bit with that one. Obviously, it came right down to us off the far hedgerow, which is what six, seven hundred metre call in. Um, really gunned it towards us for the last two, three hundred metres, and then just got uh, stuck behind some long grass, so there was no shot in it really, which is a shame because it was a really old buck, would have been a good one to take out. And then he went through the hedge, which is onto the neighbor's ground, um, and then came back out right in front of us, but just didn't give us a chance to get a shot on it. It's been about an hour and a bit since we shot that third row buck, so we probably need to start heading back to the truck get that one back to the larder and sort it out before the flies get all over it and it um, obviously gasses up too much. So uh, a bit annoying about this buck in this corner here, but you know, when you call them in like that and they're quite agitated, you don't really want to be taking sort of quick snappy shots just in case they move just as you take the shot. So um, better to let it go and come back another day and try and get it with someone else. So we'll just head back to the truck down here in case something else pops up, we'll keep the gun loaded. Um, but if not, we'll get that picked up and um, that'll be a, a wrap. There we go, that's the um, third one loaded up. We'll get that back to the larder, get it sorted out. We've got the red arrows doing us a display over here where we've got RAF Honington having their family day. And that's been a good day for us. Um, called a few Robux and uh, had some good experiences. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you tune in next time, we'll be out around the start of August uh, looking for hopefully red spikers or uh, fallow frickets. <laughs>